following podcast will contain spoilers and explicit language. Hello and welcome to episode four of Yeah, It's That Bad. My name is Joel. And I'm Martin. And I'm Carissa. Tonight we're going to do things a little differently. Instead of just doing a single movie, we're going to do a double feature. It's going to be 2009's Whiteout and, uh, what was it, 2009 or 2008's Vantage, Vantage Point. Point. What, whatever. Yeah, so. <laughs> you can tell how much we actually care about these two movies. Well, wait, hey, don't, don't show your hand. <laughs> All right. Don't show your hand just right. yet, okay? Right. So, this is Whiteout. Essentially, here's a, a really quick plot synopsis. Whiteout is a movie about Kate Beckinsale in Antarctica. She is a U.S. Marshal, and a murder has been committed in Antarctica, the first ever on the continent, and it's her job to figure out who done it. And, and sh- there's a time limit because the Whiteout is coming, and if she doesn't solve the plot before it's over, she'll be trapped in an article for six months. It's the stereotypical, there's a storm or force of nature coming, you got a time limit, there's a clock ticking, you got to figure it out, hurry up, get it done. It's going to crescendo during the storm, very predictable. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that is the basic plot of Whiteout. Martin, what did you think of Whiteout? It was the worst movie, motion pictures, images moving in a sequence I've ever seen. I've seen storyboards, I've read comics, I've seen movies, I mind, I've flickered images to myself as I read a novel. This is by far, far, far away the worst. You know, that's a little excessive. Krista, what'd you think? I thought it was awful. I think that they knew how unpredictable it was, and so they'd throw you for a loop. They'd have crazy things. At one point, there's just these jelly beans that come out of nowhere. It has nothing to do with the movie. I think they knew that uh, they're... Their plot was just so predictable that they wanted to confuse you a little bit, but it just didn't fit in at all. A lot of parts weren't very believable. I really don't believe the fact that she can go out in that kind of weather and not freeze to death with her face exposed. Do you even believe that she could be a U.S. Marshal at all? Hell no. She was so she was pretty skinny, right, and frail. She wasn't intimidating in any way, shape, or form, and she's supposed to be imposing law down here in Antarctica. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Everything everything about this movie is unbelievable. Like uh, the backgrounds, the special effects, as every, as, everything. As far as the jelly beans go, we'll get back to that because that was uh, something very special to me and Joel <laughs> when we watched this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, what happened in this movie is that in during World War II or the Cold War or, or, or something. I want to say it was during the Cold War. Okay, either, whatever. It's a, a Russian plane carrying soldiers crashed in Antarctica. I guess they were looking for materials to make a bomb or something. And when the plane crashed, on board the plane were supposedly an atom bomb. And the plane, over the years, got buried in the ice. And in the future, Kate Beckinsale and her crew discover it. Right, And this triggers... A series of events that leads to an eventual murder that and Kate Beckinsale has to solve. Several murders afterwards. Right. The plane scene in the very beginning, which was the introduction for the uh, setup for the story of this movie, was extraordinarily comedic. The CG was horrendous for the plane in particular. It looked like it came out of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2011. For another, there was newspapers all over this plane because they were hitting the pilot in the face, hitting him blinding his view, causing him to crash. He eventually got shot. That happened multiple times in this movie. People got hit in the head with like, the head what with looked like, like paper and kill, killed them instantaneously. I, I don't know where this paper is coming from, but apparently the paper is actually the murderer in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know who uh, directed this movie? No, who? It's a guy called uh, Dominic Cena. And you may not know his name, but you know his movies. He directed God in 60 Seconds, <sighs> Swordfish. Holy... Holy yeah, God. that's a true piece of shit. Wow. I hate that movie. They had to pay Holly Berry, by the way, half a million dollars to show her tits. That's how bad the worth movie it. was. Yeah, worth every penny. It right? was worth every penny. I wouldn't have saw the movie otherwise. Fucking that movie. I saw that in the theater, and I'm still upset about it. Hey, I want you to hack into this 64-bit worm. 64-bit, 94-bit worm. Hack this computer while someone gives you a blowjob. Suck his dick. Uh, put a gun to his head. It's like, <laughs> fucking like, garbage. <laughs> okay, and, and his most recent movie is Season of the Witch. Nicolas Cage's latest classic. That's two Nick Cage movies. Which was the other? Oh, Gone in Gone 60, in 60 seconds. seconds. Right, yeah. It's two Nick Cage yeah. movies. I guess they, the two attract each other, you know, <laughs> like magnets. They need each other. What are the real major takeaways from this movie? My most major takeaway is that the plot was nonsensical, and it's just the greatest sin of this movie. It's not that it's bad. I don't think this is the worst movie I've ever seen. It's far from it. What this movie is, though, is extremely boring and pointless and useless, 
and in one ear, not the other. The critics are right. It's like you just completely forgettable. I lost consciousness, like literally. I I blacked out during the movie, which is the apropos title. Just changed from whiteout to blackout. Yeah, these six minutes that we've been talking about it are just uh, more than this movie deserves, quite frankly. You know, I I expect more from Kate Beckinsale, you know. Speaking of Kate Beckinsale, on the cover of this DVD, they airbrushed her so hard, or maybe she was hit by the whiteout, so hard that it turned her into Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, yeah, she looks just like her. It's freaking bizarre. But uh, what was the biggest drawback or takeaway for me in this movie? would have to be the flashback scenes where they uh, they put this super bright yellow filter where they digitally enhance the imagery with yellow to make it look hot or warm or whatever. She was in Miami. Those flashbacks did not serve the story they had, at all. They, it, it had no purpose. They did nothing. They were there to show that she had an emotional problem because of her past, right? But couldn't you just tell me that? Did you have to show me? This stupid thing, you know? And I highly doubt she'd be a U.S. Marshal if she had that many problems, really. Yeah, that, that guy got the jump on her. That like, was my biggest up. problem. I did not find the movie believable at all, and it was boring, and the character selection was just awful. None of the characters were believable. Not even the murderer, if we, if we get to that later. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I do not believe for a single second. No. I don't, even want to, like, I don't even want to dance around the issue. Let's just do it right now. The first person that we are introduced into this movie who's not Kate Beckinsale, is the murderer. Right off the bat, here he is, the murderer. And he's a frail old man who acts like a father figure to her. He kills tons of people he works with, and for some reason or another, after killing all these people, he just can't kill her and goes into the White House. He doesn't even shoot anybody. He he ends up using a pickaxe the entire time. It's such a hostile crime, and I don't think he can overtake any of those people. Or he, that's, that's a phenomenal point. He's killing people brutally by physically stabbing them with a piece of metal. This frail old man. He looks like he's 87 years old. Like He, he <laughs> looks like he wouldn't even be able to push you over. Let alone, you know, drive a pickaxe in your heart like he did to that one guy. He can't even stitch anymore. You, you see his, his work on the bodies, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's, it's just <laughs> awful. It's, it's half-assed. I can't believe someone who is a half-assed doctor could go through all these murders. He missed Throw his someone calling. from a plane. I, I still don't understand yeah, that how, part. How do you do who, that? Who was, who was on that plane? Someone had to be there with them as, <laughs> as they were flying the plane. He, Mysterious third character that we don't know. Or the Australian. The Australian guy. Yeah. Whatever. What I don't get is he's overtaking all these people. He's a horrible doctor, apparently, but he miss he he got he finally figured out what he was good at, and that's killing people. Yeah, he really excelled <laughs> at murder. So stupid. I, I remember when I saw that old man, I thought to myself, you know what? That is probably the killer. But then I also said in my mind, I really hope that's not the killer because <laughs> that's this stupid old man. Like he's not going to kill anybody. But of course, I was right. Of course, you know that that's one of the things I thought while I was watching this movie. I kind of thought to myself. I have seen way too many movies in my lifetime. I kind of wish I didn't have such a huge repertoire of movies in my mind because I could see all the plot twists coming. I knew everything that was going to happen. This movie was really just by the numbers. and uh, You can also I tell... I think anybody can, really. Yeah, this, this movie in, in particular, even if you haven't seen a lot of movies, is extraordinarily transparent. Yeah. What a fuck! What a waste of my time. The coolest part in this movie was uh, when the coffee froze. <laughs> yes, there's a scene in the movie when she's walking out into the, uh, the storm and there's a cup of coffee sitting there, and it falls to the ground and shatters. And the instant it hits the ground, it freezes immediately. Yet, three seconds later, she walks out in the same weather with her face completely exposed. No problem. And yet they make a point that her uh, hand, as soon as it hits the metal, she actually loses two fingers from it. Yep. Doesn't affect her face, but her, her hands are just so delicate. I think they Botoxed her face with antifreeze. That could be it. That's possible. That's why she looks like Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> So any, anything else? Like, what, what else sticks out in your mind about Whiteout before we move on to the next one? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is blank. It's just whited out. Or is your mind blown from how great this movie was? The only thing I believe is that the man was senile. I mean, after the murders took place, he had to put the, the diamonds, because after all, that's, that's the entire point of the movies. It wasn't a bomb that they were after. It was these diamonds where I don't even know where they came from. And 
He sews them into the bodies, which I don't know how he was planning to get the diamonds out of the bodies or come back to them. Apparently, it was supposed yeah. to supposed to help him transport them out of that. That that actually the, made absolutely no sense because because of the murders, they had to wait six months to leave, and they didn't want to do that. But at the same time, he's sewing these diamonds that he stole. Oh, and by the way, the entire movie you're led to believe that this is some type of uranium or bomb related material that they're trying to smuggle. It's fucking diamonds. That leads us to our the best scene in the movie, right? When uh, she opens up the body and she finds that canister. Was it inside of a body or did they just find it on the, on the ground or something? The canister full of jelly beans was inside the plane. Okay, yeah. So they have the, this canister and they're like, oh no, don't open it. It might be radioactive. And when they open it, it's uh, Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Jelly Bean. Yeah, which sucks. We, we just started groaning. Everybody in this room was like, whoa, what the Sour fuck? apple. They were like, what the, what is going on? Like, Oh yeah, sour apple. That sour was, apple, sour movie. That's what he's, oh, God. Nice one. That, thank you, <laughs> thank you. He, yeah, the, the other male character takes a delicious bite of the jelly bean and goes, mm, sour apple. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, I think it's important to note that this movie was originally based on a graphic novel of the same name. Which I will never see. Never see, never read? Never. never. I want nothing to do with it. It's a shame, too, because this book could quite possibly be one of the best graphic novels ever written of all time. But because this movie was such garbage, I, I'm never going to read it. I, I echo that sentiment. I have no desire to have anything to do with anything called Whiteout ever again in my life. What about uh, when you make a mistake on a piece of paper and you... I, I use pencils now. I stopped using pens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. All right, so yeah, anything else? That's it. Yeah, good. Fine. That's more than enough time that we need to spend on White Out. Okay. What did the real critics have to say about this movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael Phillips from At The Movies called it a stupid thriller. Richard Roper from the Chicago Sun-Times called it, even in a White Out, you can see the plot twists coming. And Jordan Hoffman of UGO said, absurdities are to be expected in genre filmmaking, but disbelief can only be suspended so far. Yeah, these guys are pretty, uh, they're pretty dead on. Pretty they're, dead on accurate. Yeah, they're spot on with this movie. Or, I'm not gonna even call this a movie. Okay, that's what the critics had to say about this movie. The critics hated it. I, I think we hate it. Martin holds a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes has a list of the 100 worst movies of the last 10 years. 2000 and 2009. Whiteout is number 100. They consider it to be the 100th worst movie of the decade. Do you agree, Martin? Is it really that bad? It is absolutely that bad. They are 100% accurate. I don't know many things with complete certainty. And in fact, I'd say as a human being, I'm not a god. I can't say anything with certainty except that Whiteout is the worst movie I've ever seen. Wow. Okay. Krissa, is it really that bad? Yes, it is. It's confusing. It's boring. It has horrible effects. You get nothing from this movie. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, as for me, I concur. Yes. Yeah, it's that bad. Very bad movie. Stay away from Whiteout. It's dull. It's boring. It's pointless. It's a waste of your time. You could do, you know, read a book. Whatever, you know, do whatever you want. Anything is better than watching Whiteout. Just stay away from this movie. Okay, Martin, a scale of one to five. One. Chris, a scale of one to five. I'd say one, two. All right, I'm going to give it a two. I'm, I'm going to buck the trend here. I'm going to give it a two. It didn't make me physically angry. I just didn't like it. It was just boring. You're so. giving it a two for the shower scene. The little yeah, ass shot. Yes, we get to see Kate Beckinsale's ass. Thank you. Dominic you don't even Cena. have to watch the whole movie for that. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, thank you. That was very gratuitous, but I liked it. Great. All right, so that's it. That's done. White out. Listen to this. That's me wiping my hands <laughs> of this yeah. movie. I never want to talk about it again. I never want to look at it again. I just brought a bowl in front of Joel full of water. He's washing his hands of this movie. Yes, Punches Pilot, Pilot, Pilot style. style. I've, that's it. I'm done. Had it. Okay, our next movie for tonight's double feature is Vantage Point, starring Dennis Quaid, Forrest Whitaker, Sigourney Weaver, William Hurt. Am I missing anybody? I think that's everyone. Yeah, that's all, those are the big... Oh, he- Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. Lost is in it as well. Yeah, he's the other heavy hitter in this movie. Yeah. Okay, so Vantage Point currently holds a 34% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, so the critics did not like this movie at all. Let me do a really quick plot synopsis. Really quick. <laughs> it's considering how this movie's structured. You can sum this movie up in like a single sentence. Okay, Vantage Point is a movie about the U.S. president who is giving a speech in Spain. And in the middle of a rally, 
he gets assassinated. He gets shot by a sniper in the chest, and then total chaos breaks out. And the big gimmick of this movie is that we are essentially shown the same 10 minutes or so of this movie over and over and over again from different vantage points. I think it's you're shown it seven times, eight Six times. Six or seven times, yeah. And every single time we get to the end of one vantage point, the movie rewinds itself. It literally rewinds itself. It goes, and it goes back to the beginning. And you have to watch the same stuff again and again and again and again to get a little piece of the information. So that is the basic structure of Vantage Point. That's all you really need to know. Martin, the critics hated this movie. What did you think of Vantage Point? I liked Dennis Quaid's acting. I thought he was awesome. Really angry, really good. His sequence was interesting. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, you and I have a we have a rich history with uh, Dennis Quaid. Yes, yes, we do. You know, you and I we both shared Pandorum. <laughs> that was a wonderful movie going experience. Dennis Quaid was crazy in that movie. <laughs> you had the Pandorum effect. I know you fell in love with Legion, correct? <laughs> <laughs> oh man for the record i don't like legion for the record okay yeah i think it's important to get that out there i don't want this published where people know that i might like that movie you know if i ever do rewatch this movie i'm gonna take the time to note how many words dennis quaid actually says in this movie i bet it's under a hundred i that's fine it's his body language that i that i know oh, his all those subtleties that really sold this movie his anger really worked for me mm. i enjoyed it yeah he was a uh in this movie, he played a Secret Service agent who six months prior had taken a bullet for the president, right? And now he's back on duty, and yeah. they're not sure whether or not he's fit for duty. The Wait, so the president was, they, they attempted on his life six months ago, and they're doing it again? Yeah, I feel like the Secret Service really shit the bed on this one. I wouldn't have let the president back out in a public forum <laughs> like that after they tried to shoot him six months ago. In the most open in the most air, open air area with- ever. Literally thousands of people from the public unchecked, unscreened. No security. There's six guys there protecting the president. Uh, so Surrounded nice. by large buildings. You know who I liked? I liked the Sigourney Weaver sequence of this movie. So Sigourney Weaver, she plays the head of a news organization. She's like the news editor. And she's uh, the sassy... Re- what? I thought that she played an actor trying to make money in between films she cared about. Ouch. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Well, in this movie, Sigourney Weaver and the Avatar princess, Zoe Saldana, <laughs> they, they, they meet up for the first time, you know, two years prior to Avatar or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's pretty interesting, the two of them talking to each other. I like the Sigourney Weaver part. She was in charge of the newsroom, telling people what to do. She was sassy. I thought, look, hey, get this. Here's my pitch for a movie that I think would have been better than Vantage Point. Okay, and and it would still work with the premise. So instead of having this insane plot structure of six different people, different vantage points and the movie rewinding over and over again, how about we centralize the movie in the newsroom and Sigourney Weaver is the star and she is the one that's telling people like the cameramen where to go and each of the different cameramen are the vantage points. So it'd be like a mixture of like uh, Pontypool and Cloverfield. Like that. So I think that would be an exciting movie. It sounds exciting. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the POV camera effect, but that still sounds interesting. It sounds like an interesting way to tell a story. It'd be a lot more interesting than what we got. I'll that's, tell you that. that's for sure. Yeah. So those, those are the heavy hitters. Then the William Hurt played the president. I got a little William Hurt story that I would like to share with the world, if you, if you will permit me. I will. We both have a... Mutual friend who had a bit of a run-in with William Hurt. Phenomenal. I don't know whether or not this story is true. I'm going to let you, dear listener, decide. Fact or fiction, just like Beyond Belief starring Jonathan Frakes. (laughs) Fucking horrible show. (laughs) So you choose whether or not this story happened. And he'll tell you after the commercial break if it's true or not. Fact or fiction. Okay, this girl that we know graduated from college and her friend was chosen to sing a little song during the commencement, correct? True. And William Hurt was the keynote speaker. Because his son attended that class and was graduating with them. Okay, very good. This girl goes up, she sings her song, she sings her little heart out, people clap, you know, Kodak moment, it's really amazing. Then William Hurt gets up to the podium. (laughs) (laughs) He takes one look at her and he goes, well... It ain't over till the fat lady sings. And there she is, everyone. She is fat. (laughs) 
But <laughs> she got called out in front of several thousand people by William Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity millionaire William Hurt <laughs> called this girl fat to the entire graduating class. During her commencement. Yep. It was her moment. Her moment in the sun. She only gets one commencement in her entire life. And, and William, William Hurt, Hurt calls her fat. Blew her out, right? Blew up her spot right then and there. And to this day, I mean... I, I've only ever met this girl once, and she that was the first thing she said to me was like, I gotta tell you a story about William Hurt. Come here, sit down. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you decide at home. William Hurt, hater of fat people? Hmm. He's not the skinniest person. It's not like he's... William Hurt? Yeah. William Hurt supporter right now. I, he was good in Dark City. I know that you refuse to believe that this story is true because it's you have it. It's too true to be, love. you know, it's too insane to be true. It's too hurtful. To Joel. Well, whatever. You you decide. I'll let you, you know, I'll leave it's it up to the listener. too painful. Okay, fine. So William Hurt is the president, and he hires a double to uh, take the bullet for him. Yeah, he's kind of like Michael Jackson. This poses a lot of questions. The fact that he gets assassinated and the... <laughs> at, at the end. It's like, how the fuck did that happen? <gasps> okay, so first off, the, the main, the biggest problem with the fact that he's using a double is that I don't know if you remember this, but back when this movie came out, Vantage Point, the trailer for this movie, was the single most overplayed trailer of the year, hands down. Every movie I saw that year had the Vantage Point trailer attached to it. So I had to hear, stop, rewind that, at least 10 times that year, over and over and over again. And and in this trailer, they spoil the twist of this movie. They say, Mr. President, you've been shot. You know, but you, you can't go out there. You know, they'll know if we use the double, right? Yeah, they did. They spoiled it in the trailer. The trailer. People always complain that trailers give away too much of a movie, and this is probably the one of the best examples of that. Right it actually there. literally gave away the plot twist. So we knew going in what was going to happen in this movie, why they, they, they do that, why they even bother, I guess. But it worked because this movie made a ton of money. Martin, how much do you think this movie cost to make? I think it cost $30 million to make. 30 million, okay. The actual, okay, the budget of this movie was 40 million, so you were very close. And how much did it make? I think worldwide it probably pulled in 117 to 135 million. Very good guess. You should become a, uh, an analyst for uh, box office uh, yeah. mojo.com. <laughs> okay, so 151 million, 161,491. Smash hit. That was worldwide, correct? Worldwide gross yeah. revenue. Yeah, that's people around the planet loved Vantage Point. We didn't, but everybody <laughs> else did. <laughs> well, that trailer must have been really good because it pulled all these people into their seats. You know, who do you think is the prime audience for this movie? Apparently, everyone, because it was played during every trailer for every genre of movie. I'm going to say that this is a movie for your parents, not for me. You think so? This is a, a middle-aged man movie. Listen, it uses the Rashomon effect, which Rashomon is a movie, um, a Japanese movie, and it's a uh, murder mystery. And to solve the Kira mystery... Kira Kurosawa, right? Correct. To solve the murder mystery, it shows different vantage points of the, oh. same, uh, of the same murder. It was done... It was the first time it was done. It was very interesting. It was a good movie. And pretty much every, every critic that's, that has reviewed it agrees that it is a very good movie. And the way it's shot and the story is told is integral into figuring out who the murderer is. This movie is different. It's not integral to show it that way to figure out who who done it. Usually when you do an insane plot structure like this in a movie, it's for a purpose. Like there's a reason for it. It serves the plot. You know, the, the whole going back in time, looping, watching the vantage points. Like we're supposed to be able to learn a little more or, you know, that last piece of the puzzle is supposed to fall. In this, it's pointless. It's, it's a it's, gimmick. It's not pointless. It's a gimmick to it, make it's money. A, it's a gimmick, yeah. And, it, and it's a good gimmick because they made a lot of money, so it worked. Yeah, it worked. They pretty much just shot the movie in normal order and then chopped it up and then yeah, just did it, in, they did it all in editing. That's it. Like, this is, this is a normal movie. There's no reason for, the, for all this stuff to happen. Okay, so back to the stuff with the double. This poses a lot of questions. Number one, so you're using a double to give the speech. Is this guy like, like, can he perfectly imitate the president's voice? Because he's about to give like this amazing speech to all these people. Yeah. Yes. Yes, he is. And if he wanted to take control of our government, coup d'état. If they if they wanted to do a coup and have somebody else use him as a puppet, I feel like that's a plausible uh, event that could that could happen if you had a perfect body double that could deliver speeches like that. Yeah, okay, so that's problem number one. Problem number two is, what if the president was blown away? Like, he was blown to bits, because they they blew off a bomb in the middle of the town square, right? Just blew up the podium. What if the president was there and his body just... (laughs) 
<laughs> blew to a million pieces. What are you going to do with the real president? Because they made it. A, they made a real point about talking about how the world cannot know <laughs> that we're yeah. using doubles. Yeah. I don't know. I guess they'd have to confiscate the footage from GNN. <laughs> okay. So so stupid. And then, they, like, like I said, they made a point like no one must know we use a double. Yet, what does the president do the instant his doubles is killed? He calls his wife and says, don't worry. I'm fine. Wait, what? Is she going to keep the secret? She's not going to tell anybody that, that he's using a double? I don't know. I don't know what secrets the first lady is uh, sworn to hold. You don't think she's going to tell her children? Don't worry, your father's alive. Don't worry, your father's alive. He wasn't blown up. He wasn't up. Blown, to be- <laughs> blown to pieces. I don't know. I don't know. This movie's retarded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Fine. All right. Here's another uh, question I have. Matthew Fox the big plot twist of this movie, it turns out that Matthew Fox is a double agent and he's working with the terrorists and he was integral in causing the president to be assassinated, right? Correct. What'd you think of that? That twist? Oh, by the way, Matthew Fox is the reason why Dennis Quaid said stop, rewind that. Yeah, he is. In case you uh, you saw the trailer, which if you saw a movie in 2009 in the theater, I don't know how you didn't see this trailer. Um, Yeah, he was the reason. You know, by the way, speaking of that trailer, I'm pretty sure I, I, I remember reading about this back in the day. I believe there's like a, an award show for trailers. I think it's called like the Golden Trailer. And I think that won for like best trailer of the year. Great. Yeah, great. Good for them. All right. So Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox looks super sexy in this movie. Yes. I, I know. so hot. I noticed you were around right the whole the, time you were watching this. I was looking at pictures of him that you were I rock like hard. Tiger beat. <laughs> right. <laughs> hung it up on my wall. He is, You're as stiff as a board right, the whole time. The, I actually injured my penis <laughs> while I was watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a cast right now. Okay, so the, the, the whole double cross thing, what'd you think? I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of stupid. Touche. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to rebuttal that. Well, okay, here's my case, in, case for this. All right. To assume that either A, he was a terrorist from the beginning, or B, he turned somewhere along the line, right? I assume A. He was always a terrorist. So he spent all that time going through Quantico FBI training. He passed all those background checks. No problem. And he made it all the way that far. Have you ever seen the Manchurian Candidate? He had like a microchip in his head or whatever. He was brainwashed. he was brainwashed. But this is like a similar effect where somebody goes through this enormous amount of training, but they secretly are. Okay, let's say that is okay, let's say that is true and he was a double agent from the very beginning. He has been standing next to the president for a very long time. Why not just put a bullet in the president's head at any point? He wants to survive, self-preservation. Dumb. Dumb. Listen, he's n- does does he look Islamic to you? No, he looked like a white Anglo-Saxon guy from New England. Yeah, he looked like he just flew down from Boston to yeah. help uh, help out here in Spain. <laughs> yeah, and, <he's> and, uh, <laughs> and you know what? This love, this double life will soon be over. Thank for, God, he says. For, yeah, for whatever reason, he wants the president dead, but he cares about his own life as well. Unlike, uh, you know. 99% of the suicide bomber. That's another thing. There was a bomber suicide terror. bomber in this movie. So why? Well, why? Why, why? why did they do that? What was the point of that? It confused me. So maybe the point was to confuse me? Ugh. Did it not confuse you? I, I rolled my eyes and I said, really? Do we need this? Really? Isn't assassinating the president enough? You put a bullet in him. Isn't that enough? No. Was it, was it not confusing? <sighs> it was dumb. They needed to kill... The real one, I guess. The real, whatever, and the real president. Somehow they knew they had, he had a double. Well, I guess Matthew Fox would have no, took them Ma- off. No, Matthew Fox knew that he had a double because he's entrusted with uh, protecting the president as a yeah, Secret Service yeah, agent. Yeah, great, great. The real problem is the people who did the background checks on Matthew Fox really shit the bed. Yeah, so Forrest Whitaker is in this movie. His Co- eye is twitching. A completely pointless role. He really does nothing. He saves a girl's life. That's about it. He he is the guy with the with, with the uh, the video camera recording what's going on. His role in this movie it reminded me of a movie from the early '90s. See if you remember it. See if okay. I'm gonna slowly give you the info. It stars Johnny Depp, Christopher Walken, and it also contains a wacky time related gimmick to how the movie is shot. You know what I'm talking about? No. Nick of Time, and that movie was shot in real time. Very similar to this. Wasn't he trying to assassinate somebody in that too? I don't know. I don't remember that movie. Okay. Well, if you're out there looking at that, it's a much better movie than this. Here's something that I I noticed in this movie. Do you realize that in this movie, three different characters are involved in three different car crashes? Yeah. Very repetitive. 
why is everybody getting injured in cars? Well, one of them was an ambulance. Okay, well, my favorite is the fact that Dennis Quaid gets T-boned by like an 18-wheeler. <laughs> it slams into a wall. His neck is like snaps. And, and by all accounts, he should be dead. No one can survive this. He gets right back up and goes running off of Matthew Fox. No problem. And why, then, why would you find that hard to believe when he, in the plaza, the suicide bomber kills everyone except him? Except... Dennis Quaid. Yeah, but but ten minutes later, Matthew Fox is involved in a much minor accident, and it kills him. It, it kills him. Dennis Quaid's tough. Yeah, he's a real tough guy. He, he's, he's already been shot in this movie. Dennis Quaid. He's already been shot in this movie. His character's been shot already, and he's fine. Yeah, he's indestructible. He's unbreakable. That's essentially it. That, that, that's. Is there anything else? Anything else? About Not that I can think of. No. Yeah, I can't think of anything either. So. Sorry, Chris, you didn't see this movie, so you you had to be excluded from this discussion. Let's see. What the critics have to say. Edward Douglas from ComingSoon.net says, a, compl- a competently made action thriller, but nothing particularly groundbreaking once it casually discards its pretense of being told from multiple points of view. Kristen Toto, Washington Times says, no matter how you look at it, Vantage Point is a letdown. Nick Schlager of Lessons of Darkness says, a monument to... <laughs> A monument to cinematic suckiness. <laughs> and uh, Michael Phillips says from the Chicago Tribune, the information sorting and gathering required by Barry L. Levy's screenplay feels like night school as opposed to great night out at the movies. So the critics they didn't like Vantage Point, 34% around tomatoes. Martin, is it really that bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I wouldn't say it's that bad. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I agree. I'm going to say, yeah, it's that bad. If you like the gimmick, if you if you want to see a movie that has this kind of a gimmick where time repeats itself, just like Martin said, go see Rashomon. Or, or just like I said, go see Nick of Time. And I also have three more movies at the top of my head that I can list off of. Well, this is your favorite favorite effect. Yes, I am a big fan of like time travel and you know looping recursive plots and things like that. I like that. If done well... I, I love it. I, I eat that stuff up. So here are some movies you can go see that have kind of twisty plot points and stuff like that. So any of these movies will be better than this. Primer, Triangle, Eleven, Fourteen, and yeah, that's it. That's all I got on top of my head. I go go, go see any of those movies. I actually ab- abhor movies with this um, Rashomon effect gimmick. So I mean, oh, I- Time Crimes. That's another one. I hated that fucking movie. Yeah, I liked it. So there you go. Go check that out. There you go. Just agree. We'll agree to disagree on this one point. All right, fine. Let's uh, let's break it down then. All Joel, right. on a scale of one to five, what do you rate Vantage Point? Two. Don't bother. I didn't hate it. But I'll tell you this. As much as I did not like Vantage Point, it was way better than Whiteout. I'm going to give this movie a... Straightforward, two out of five. Wasn't horrible, horrible, but I wouldn't recommend anybody go see it. I saw it in the same week that I saw Whiteout. <laughs> so, I mean, I feel You've like... You've been on was, Suicide I've Watch on ever suicide. since. I, I feel like I, I've been tainted. My, uh, my scale has been thrown way out of whack <laughs> for rating <laughs> movies after I saw Whiteout. So, this could have gotten a one on any other week, but it slipped by with a two after I saw Whiteout. Com- yeah, the compar- <laughs> <laughs> it really gained from comparison. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's it. That's that. So, two movies. Yes, they're both as bad as everybody says. So, that's it. Tune in next week when we are going to review Vanilla Sky... Thanks for listening. Be sure to visit yeahitsthatbad.com where you can listen to previous episodes and you can also subscribe to the show so you won't miss out on any upcoming shows. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for an upcoming episode, you can send us an email at yeahitsthatbad at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment on this episode's page and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. But most important of all, if you liked what you just heard, please Tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends.